It's a great pleasure for me, Rajiv Mishra, architect, currently principal at Sir JJ College of Architecture, to welcome you for this session on advances in construction and materials. We have three eminent speakers today from various parts of the world who would actually talk about formwork, construction, and various technologies that we need to know when it comes to high-rise building construction. The final presentation of the session uh, will be given by Mr. Naida from PERI Germany, entitled Formworks of High-Rise Construction. Please help me welcome Mr. Naida. Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jürgen Knida. I am from Peri Formwork Systems Company, and I'm living in Germany. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity being here and make a presentation about modern formwork technology on high-rise buildings. Uh, PERI was founded 1969 and therefore it's uh, more than 40 years on the market. PERI actually pioneered the crane climbing system and introduced the self-climbing system for high-rise buildings 1978. That means we have experience for more than 30 years in self-climbing technology. <clears throat> so. Concrete buildings, what type ever need a form walk? So, and the form, a high-rise building, uh, consists of several elements. Vertical and horizontal elements, that means a uh, high-rise building consists of a uh, substructure and a superstructure. Substructure mainly retaining walls, basement slabs, the superstructure, typical slabs, uh, non-typical slabs, bracing floors, columns, and the main core or elevator cores or lift shafts. Uh, I like to focus only on the vertical elements because uh, these are the most difficult elements on a high-rise building. Slabs are pretty easy. Uh, high-rise or the vertical elements of high-rise buildings can be made either uh, with conventional form, which is the cheapest one, of course, but the most time-consuming, then the crane climbing form and self-climbing form. So uh, the choice of the right formwork actually depends very strongly on external and internal parameters. I like to tell you some of the internal parameters. This is the geometry, whether the floors are repetitive, whether the building is simple or complex, or the changing in geometry when the building gets up in height, which is in most of the cases happen. Uh, concrete, it's an issue, uh, rate of pour, the concrete pressure, concrete finish, the curing time, and the sequence of work. Cycle times is very, very important in the construction industry because all the construction um, companies are forced to supply the high-rise buildings in a very tight time schedule. And the formwork choice, of course, either existing formal material at customers to be reused, to rent the formwork or to purchase the formwork, or the best formwork for the current project versus the maxim maximum flex flexibility for future projects. The external parameters are space, constraint of existing roads or buildings have to be considered, the storage area for uh, the formwork, assembly area for the formwork, wind is an issue, I come that on that issue back later. Crane, the cap capacity, lifting capacity of the cranes at the long range, uh, the availability of cranes, type of cranes, of course, and safety. Uh, it's getting more and more, and more important on high-rise building, the safety requirements. And uh, we have to meet, not only the formwork company, but also the construction companies have to meet these high special requirements. Construction planning, of course, the milestone working schedules, uh, project duration, and we have also to follow local, local uh, rules and regulation concerning uh, safety and building and other kind of aspects. Uh, because the self-climbing form, it's, uh, it's the most expensive formwork, 
this is a chart where you can see the difference between a crane climbing form, which is the yellow line, and the self-climbing form, which is the red line. There are two options to consider, or two situations to consider. This is the assembly and the cost. You see that the self-climbing form is higher in cost concerning the purchase or the lease, and the assembly costs are also higher. However, when you go to the right side, then you see that the more um, expensive self-climbing system gets more and more economical and efficient, uh, depending on the number of floors you have to make on your high-rise building. The criteria or the field of application of the self-climbing form are towers, different type, bridges, piers, or pylons, and of course high-rise buildings. And on high-rise buildings, we made with the self-climbing form or the grain climbing form the facade, cores, shafts, and also on curve building, it's possible to use not only slip form, which is very common on silos, shown here on that uh, picture. We also can do that in self-climbing form. And chimneys. And of course, columns with different shape, either round columns, rectangular columns, or squared columns. So the criteria of the self-climbing form are great building heights, of course, tight working space on city sites, Again, the grain is an issue, and the tight time schedule. We have short construction periods, and the construction companies cannot afford of major delays. And with that self-climbing system, we offer uh, high requirements on the concrete quality supplied. So the uh, ACS self-climbing form, this is the third generation we developed in our company, stands for automatic climbing system with a lifting capacity of 100 kilonewton per hydraulic cylinder. Because a self-climbing form is absolutely independent from crane jumping, it is raised by its own independent uh, system of hydraulic. Of course, uh, uh, to meet all these requirements, of high-rise buildings and geometry, we can't do it with only one type of self-climbing form. For that reason, we developed and designed different types of self-climbing form. And this is, for example, here the regular one, which is um, self-climbing units with a formwork on top for straight walls on the inside and the outside. Same th system, um, we call that a gallows system, where the form panels are hanged on a gallows structure, mainly used on tight, or smaller cores. Uh, we have also in our product range a platform system, a self-climbing platform system for big cores. The biggest core we ever made was 40 by 20 meters with a self-climbing platform. And of course, we are also offering self-climbing form for little shafts, for small shafts, with, uh, to give an idea, two by two by three by three meters. And uh, we have only not vertical structures, we have also inclined structures. Also on high-rise buildings, we have inclined walls. And on bridge buildings, we have inclined pylons. And we have to guarantee uh, the safety for the people working on top of it. That means the working platforms must be adjustable to get it horizontal even on inclined structures. Uh, the heart of the self-climbing system uh, is the hydraulic, uh, the climbing mechanism. This consists of a hydraulic cylinder of 10 ton capacity and a control device. This is the upper and the lower climbing head. This hydraulic check is fixed to each bracket and one unit usually consists of two brackets. And this climbs up a rail which is fixed to the building. So on the uh, left hand side you see a unit consisting of two brackets and two cylinders with a lifting capacity of 20 tons. Um, also um, important is to raise the forms absolutely simultaneously, even when we have to lift unequal loads or different loads. Uh, a high-rise building is complex that it's impossible to design the formwork with symmetrical elements. No way. So the elements have to be designed to meet actually the geometry and ended up often, very often, in an asymmetric way. 
Also, when we climb an inclined structure, then one hydraulic check on that particular project here had to lift nine tons of self-weight of the forms and the other one only one ton. And uh, we have to guarantee that all the hydraulic units, all these climbing units, must be lifted very absolutely simultaneously. The loads uh, is an issue for the form work, for the self-climbing form, uh, the service loads. Uh, according to the site requirements, so we are discussing with our clients what kind of service loads we have to put on top of our platforms. For example, storage of rebars for setting the rebar for the next pouring step. Or cabinets or toilets or whatever uh, is required can be put on the platforms and we need to know what weight we have to carry. Wind is a big issue. Um, our system actually is designed for three conditions. The climbing condition enables you to climb the system uh, without any crane up to 72 kilometers an hour, which is actually too much because the job sites usually shut down when the wind speed exceeds 60 kilometers an hour. Working condition means that the people can work on top of the platforms up to 100 kilometers without doing any provisions, but I only had one project in Germany where they made one day works on top of the building with 100 kilometers an hour, but not on the external face, on the internal side of the building. And storm condition, that means the system has to resist uh, high winds without any failure, without any uh, breakage of single components. And according to the German notes, the highest wind speed we have to consider is 164 kilometers an hour. However, we made a couple of years ago uh, the highest bridge building in France. This is the Via Duc de Mulot, uh, where the system had to be calculated for a wind speed of 200 kilometers an hour. And this is really high. Accuracy is also an issue on high-rise buildings because you cannot afford, okay, sometimes it's, uh, it's art, uh, architectural feature when high-rise buildings are twisted or leaning to one side, but usually high-rise buildings should be straight. And uh, the accuracy can be achieved with a modern formwork system. Here on, in Frankfurt, we used the ACSR system, the regular one. And on the following project, you will now see the different uh, formwork systems, the types we are using on these projects. Here on that high-rise building in Frankfurt, with a total height of 186 meters, the total deviation was from the bottom up to the top only 5 centimeters. So that means uh, when your surveyor makes a mistake in surveying uh, one pouring section and he's, uh, you get out of tolerances, the system can be adjusted in all directions, the formwork system can be adjusted in all directions to get back in the next pouring step to the tolerances. Also the facade is perforated with uh, openings and the window box outs, they were firmly connected to the outside, to the external form and had to be collapsible because the inclination of the windows was not to the outside but to the inside, makes it more difficult, more challenging. And we had to meet a tolerance in the openings of plus minus 2.5 millimeters because prefabricated window frames had to be placed in, into the openings without any additional works. And we met these requirements. So, uh, the self-climbing system, ACS, is 100% equipped with the hydraulic. That means you see here around that building um, all the, uh, the climbing units. And because it's 100% equipped with the hydraulic, either uh, some units can be climbed together or the units can be climbed separately. It strongly depends on the construction sequence on your site. Uh, it means uh, when you follow a certain sequence and you find out that a different sequence is better for your cycle time, you simply can change raising the forms and starting uh, rebar works and concrete works on, from one side of the building to the center of the building or to the other side of the building. So you are absolutely independent. Uh, some projects now, World Trump Tower in New York, a height of 258 meters. We supplied the self-climbing form for the facade, for the columns and the slabs, and for the core. They made a two-day cycle of one entire floor, and the footprint is 1,100 square meter of uh, area. Of course, it requires a little uh, yeah, work capacity, so 187 uh, carpenters 
enabled a two-day cycle. And what was amazing, all the um, internal forms, the slab form walk and internal shear walls were made with conventional timber form. Even the props were made of timber. And nevertheless, they achieved a two-day cycle. And an exception to the rest of the world in New York is they pour all these high-rise buildings monolithi monolithically. That means the vertical elements and the horizontal elements on top in one pour. High-rise building Park Tower in Chicago. This was actually our key project in the United States. Uh, 81 followed this project. So we made only 81 project of out of 400 uh, in United States. And this was also the first requirement uh, from the side of our clients to lift and to fix a 20-ton placing boom to the self-climbing form. This saves the clients the uh, hydraulic of the placing boom or lifting the placing boom with the crane. And this saves also to fix the placing boom, which is usually done between two slabs. This everything could be done in our self-climbing form. And this was really a big, big challenge. They made two floors, and you see this uh, entire concrete building, two floors in six days. The result, I think, it's quite good. One of the most complicated buildings we made in Spain, in Barcelona, um, this is uh, also a, a piece of art. We supplied the regular one, the gallow system and the platform system. And the openings in that tower, and by the way, the tower was not round, was not elliptic, it was somehow round. And we had to face and overcome problems of four different radii. And this was not easy to achieve because when the radii change, then you have to adjust the forms. And here the openings, they were designed according to the mathematic chaos method. I have no idea what it is. But it means that all these openings have, are not equal, none of these openings. And these openings were also not on the same location. It makes it more difficult. And uh, you see the formwork on top of it, so the, to uh, the tower uh, started straight, vertical up, and then moved into a dome area, a curved dome area, and we had to adjust the form on top of the building, so we cannot afford, because it would spend too much time to take down the, the forms and to rebuild it and put it up again, so all the formwork modifications have to be made on top of the building in order to save time, and this was really a good thing, a five-day cycle they achieved on that project. Uh, enormous illuminated during night because they uh, fixed afterwards uh, um, uh, colored curtain walls. Uh, this is a high-rise building in Korea. You see that the core is running ahead of the remaining building. Uh, the tricky thing was that the client didn't want to lift the slab form walk, and the slab form walk was a panel form walk, a lightweight aluminum panel form walk, and he didn't want to lift this form walk with the crane. So the crane was um, blocked and occupied with other works, and they asked us to lift even the slab form walk with our hydraulic system. We simply extended our self-climbing form and the outside, and the people moved out or shifted out the panels, and then we climbed the slab form walk together with the self-climbing form. A Seven World Trade Center in New York was the first building who was erected, who was constructed after 9-11. And Perry got the order to do that. Um, another exception in you know, New York is to the rest of the world that nobody else than steel workers are allowed to work on the top. So all the other workers have to work below. And that means that the, the steel structure had to be always six floors ahead of the concrete core. And that building consists of a, concrete, a huge concrete core and the steel structure around. And we had to find a way to go through and to climb through the existing steel structure. Finally, we found it. Once you get a solution, then it's easy. Yeah? But until you get a solution, that's difficult. And the, the concrete workers were so fast that they had to stop working because they catched up so quickly the works of the iron workers, of the steel workers. Uh, and this proves, again, that uh, a high sophisticated and very fast and safe formwork system can save you a lot of money. This is an, an, it was hardly possible to take uh, nice pictures from the self-climbing form. 
Uh, the rest of the world make it different. Here in Russia, the steel structure follows the concrete course. However, we had to meet the requirement of minus 40 degrees climbing the hydraulic units. It's very seldom here in Mumbai, I think, minus 40 degrees. But as we are working all over the world, even these conditions had to be solved. They made also a five days cycle. Uh, the Trump Tower in Chicago, a building of 345 meter height uh, with an area of 11,000 square meters was built between seven days per cycle, per floor, on the lower part of the building and ended up on a three-day cycle on the top of the building. Uh, they poured 140,000 cubic meters of concrete into that building with 25,000 ton of steel. Another challenge, uh, the United Tower in Kuwait City. Uh, you certainly remember on the first Nokia mobile phone, the shape of that mobile phone looks very similar to the United Tower. We supplied the self-climbing form for the core and the protection system, which I come back later, for the facades. And the facade is curved in both directions. Alhamra Tower. Uh, we are very proud in getting this tower a height of 412 meters. I take a little advantage of the time left. Thank you. Um, the Alhamra Tower in Kuwait, 412 meter height, 77 floors with almost 100,000 square meters of area. Uh, the core was made in seven days. They, need, they needed three days only to put reinforcement in. Very heavy reinforced. However, the core was quite easy because it was straight. The tricky thing, you can see the wing walls, and this is also an architectural feature, twisted. And when you have a look to that, this can be made with a climbing form. So each pore of these twisted wing walls had to be adjusted on top of the building in order to achieve the exact geometry of these wing walls. So it's almost completed, the, the, the concrete works are almost completed. Marina Bay in Singapore is also a nice building where we use the ACS system. However, on the front side of the curved part of the building, because uh, we are pretty uh, yeah, far concerning formwork technology, however, nobody is still able to uh, self-climb a curved line. But this is the future we will solve. And for that reason, we uh, solved that problem with a crane handled form. Turning Torso um, was designed by Santiago Calatrava, a very well known and famous architect, uh, engineer, and artist. Uh, that Turning Torso. Uh, the idea came from that sculpture where you see in the middle and the chairman of the board of a Swedish um, bank asked Mr. Calatrava to design a, a high-rise building looking very similar to uh, the model you can see in the middle. And Mr. Calatrava never before made a structure or designed a structure where people li are living. And this was the first one. This was also for us a challenge, believe me. <laughs> so that building uh, consists of uh, 40, uh, 54 floors uh, with an area of 20,000 square meter of uh, yeah, area, 2,500 windows and 5,500 square meters of glass facade. They made a seven-day cycle completely, including the curtain walls, including the steel structure with 21 people. Unbelievable, but it's true. Perry had uh, the task to, sub to design and supply a self-climbing platform for the core, for the inner core, and the wall thickness of the inner core started at the bottom of the building of two meters and ended up at the top of the building, almost 200 meters, by 40 centimeters. So it decreased from two meters to 40 centimeters. And also the adjustment on the form, and this is actually the, uh, um, one of the main issues, the adjustments of the forms needs to be done on top of the building and had to be done very easily. Oh my goodness, no. Okay, and you see that, I don't believe you, and you see that the nose uh, rotates in 90 degrees in height. 
and you see nice pictures of that building. Uh, RC, how much time do I have? Three minutes? I can't do that. Okay. N the, the, the next is the RCS is a rail climbing system. I go that through very quickly. The field of application is the same as for the self-climbing system. Uh, towers, bridges, high-rise buildings, uh, silos, and columns. Uh, the criteria also the same, but the RCS system, it's a rail-guided system, can be either crane-climbed or self-climbed on low to medium high-rise buildings. The other requirements, the same as for the self-climbing form. Uh, it stands for rail-climbing system, also different types. Carriage, gallow, and protection system. And this, I like to focus on the protection system. Uh, the climbing options are, instead of the self-climbing form, it can be either crane-climbed or self-climbed, and it's permanently fixed to the walls even if you crane-climb the system. And this was a requirement coming from UK because a lot of accidents happened in the past, lifting self uh, crane-climbing forms. So many people came to this, and then they asked for a rail climbing system which is permanently fixed to the wall even during climbing. So... Uh, the big difference to the self-climbing form is it's not 100% equipped with hydraulic. We developed a movable hydraulic system consisting of a hydraulic pump and hydraulic cylinders which are shifted from one unit to the other units. You can see that here the principle, you can lift two units at one go with four hydraulic cylinders. Then you disconnect the hoses, you shift it sideways, you connect it again, you lift up the next units, and so on. This gives you the same speeds, lifting speeds, the same safety, however it saves you a lot of on the hydraulic system. And this is one of the reasons why we uh, developed this one, because this system is also lighter. And on, other, on many projects I could tell you that it's uh, as fast as the self-climbing form. Now, uh, the one project in Korea, uh, 15 high-rise buildings, 3,000 apartments between 70 and 150 meters height. Here you see the footprint of the building and the RCS system, because it's lighter, uh, can be used on buildings where uh, the geometry is very complicated. You see here balcony steps in, steps out, and uh, that picture shows you how safe the system protects the people working on top. Uh, Printly brace in England, same thing, RCS. I'm sorry that I go, had to go through, I have to go through very quickly. High-rise building in Frankfurt, it's 170 meter high. The core was made with a self-climbing form. The outer one with the RCS system. Uh, it's really worth to mention that during construction phase, the columns could not take the um, full bending moment when the system uh, is attached to. So we had to put our climbing embeds, which holds the whole system to the structure, except to the location where the bending moment was uh, below the maximum. So, uh, and this project, Ritz Carlton in Charlotte, leads me to the protection panel. I'm, three more minutes, please. So, and the clients, actually, they ask for a system which protects the people uh, working on top and also protects debris falling down to, uh, to the roads. Also, uh, every year, many working days are lost due to high wind and bad weather conditions. And high-rise construction, actually, they poses a safety risk on busy traffic, major city streets and or railways. And we find a solution for that. So we have different types. Uh, with different heights, speeding up cycle time. Uh, the big advantage is that the system, which is outside of the buildings, is completely covered to the edge of the slabs, which gives you a high safety. The last slide should show you the countries we supplied self-climbing form, form walks all over the world. And I'm in particular very proud that I could add the Indian flag November 2009 because Perry got the order for the Kohino project, which we supplied recently. And in a couple of months, you see how that system works perfectly. Thank you very much for your patience and for your interest.